Labvakar, labdien! Latvijas televīzijas skatītāji šodien Rīgā ieradās Ukraiņas premjerministrs Denis Šmihaļs, lai ar Latvijas amatpersonām runātu par kopīgo sadarbību un Latvijas tālāko atbalstu Ukrainai, kā to labāk darīt. Tāpēc šodien tikāmies ar viņu ekskluzīvā intervijā, lai runātu par to, kāda ir situācija Ukraiņas frontē par starptautsku atbalstu noturību un par Ukraiņas tālākajiem plāniem. Good day to you. Thank you for meeting with Latvijas televīzijas here. Good day. Thank you for having me here. Uh, welcome to, to Latvia. And uh, just on the way in in the studio, you talked about that you just visited the uh, Latvian Occupation Museum and you were quite impressed with the visit there. Absolutely. It is very, uh, absolutely interesting experience to compare what Russians now are doing here in Ukraine, what they uh, have done in Ukraine during the previous uh, years and last century. So we have the same, the same situation, the same history. We have the same situation now in Ukraine. So they continue terrorism, they continue uh, genocide against Ukrainians, they continue departure uh, people, uh, they continue kidnapping children in Ukraine. So if you would like to feel something what is happening in Ukraine, you may visit it, your uh, museum of occupation and just to feel the same what is now in Ukraine. Now the Russia's full-scale invasion in Ukraine is continuing now in the third year has begun already. Uh, now the situation on the front line is uh, tough for Ukraine um, and Russia keeps its aggression, it keeps pushing uh, to occupy new territories to try to do that and missiles attacks and drone attacks continue as well. How would you describe the situation on the front lines in Ukraine right now? I should begin uh, noted that we liberate 50% of our territories since the beginning of the full-scale aggression. We liberate, in fact, Black Sea, and now Black Sea is uh, unblocked. We can export our uh, goods, our uh, grain through the Black Sea, uh, having, our, having no our own fleet. We're using drones and missiles liberate Black Sea. So we will continue this strategy on the front line. And now we are fighting with Russians, and the situation is difficult only because of lack of ammunition for artillery. We are waiting. Czech initiative, uh, which Latvia supports strongly, uh, we hope will bring us additional uh, uh, capacity uh, to fulfill this deficit of uh, artillery ammunition. And uh, despite this deficit, uh, we in any way uh, stabilize front line, we deter uh, Russian uh, army, we deter our territories, and, and um, we protect our territories, and uh, we will continue our fight. We are not exhausted, we are tired, uh, but we will continue to protect ourselves. In this uh, unprovoked war, Ukraine is victim. And if victim will stop to protect itself, so we will just die. Our families will die. Russians, you are right, continue their terroristic attacks on our civilian infrastructure. Tonight they destroyed uh, three uh, civilian uh, blocks, houses, and after that, when emergency teams uh, come on site, they continue these uh, attacks and uh, just killed, unfortunately, our rescue service, and which just come uh, to stop these fires and to save the people. So-called uh, double-tap attacks, uh, quite scary. Um, now the Ukrainian president, uh, Volodymyr Zelensky, he just signed uh, this week uh, into law a bill lowering the military uh, mobilization age from 27 to 25 by two years. Uh, now we know Russia has had a sizable advantage in terms of manpower over these past two years, especially. Uh, why did the president sign the bill right now? So, uh, the president signed three bills, uh, and actually it's about uh, decreasing of age for mobilization, it's about creation of electronic uh, cabinet for uh, mobilized people, and uh, another uh, law for uh, better conditions for uh, mobilization and for uh, counting all of the people. So uh, this is needs for now, uh, for this stage of the war. Uh, we are waiting that our parliament will adopt uh, another, uh, this full-scale uh, law for mobilization with uh, additional and new conditions, which will make mobilization much more uh, transparent, much more 
um, uh, faster and easier. So uh, we wait for this. Uh, actually, Parliament, uh, Ukrainian Parliament, on on the committee level, uh, finished discussions, and we hope that next week it will it will, it will be uh, in Parliament and it will be supported by our Parliament. Uh, now we have more or less stable situation in our army. Uh, new chief commander, uh, General Sirsky, begins rotations on the front line, so it uh, makes the situation a little bit uh, easier for our uh, personnel on the front line, so they have possibility to uh, recover their powers uh, a little bit. We, we've also we've met uh, uh, our TV crews, myself including, on the front lines. You know, war warriors have been there for these two years, they're quite tired. So, but in any way, uh, soldiers are still encouraged to protect our country, to fight with enemy. They ask us only about uh, ammunition. So we are waiting for um, this artillery ammunition. We ask also about uh, middle and long range equipment to cut Russian logistics on the occupied territories in Crimea. We strongly need this. And we also ask for the missiles for uh, air defense. Uh, systems and air defense equipment, all kinds uh, which we have. So we need this because of the uh, deficit and this gap connected with uh, delay of uh, support from United States. Uh, and also, you know, Western countries have delivered uh, lots of military aid to Ukraine over the past two years. And as you mentioned, however, there's been shortcomings over the past months, especially, which has contributed to the situation on the front line as it is now. Also, the EU, the promised one million uh, shells are, have not been fulfilled. You mentioned U.S. support package still stuck in uh, U.S. Congress, uh, still waiting for decision from Germany, hopefully, about the Precision Towers missiles. Um, and you said that it is a crucial year. You hope that the decisions will be made soon, sooner than later, and this is a crucial year for Ukraine. We are happy because of Czech initiative. It brings hope that we will have uh, in short period uh, big quantity of uh, ammunition for artillery. We are uh, waiting and we believe that European Union will support uh, this one million and we have a schedule and we discuss this with uh, Mr. Borrell, the high representative of European Commission. Uh, we also have very good conversations uh, with European commissioners, for example, with Commissioner Breton. And, uh, European Commission and Europe in general, uh, as for me now, is waking up and developing uh, military and defense uh, protection industry. So I believe that we will uh, reach good results during this year in supplying of ammunition and uh, equipment uh, to Ukraine and uh, for European countries, for European member countries. So I think that you, this year will change the situation with production and uh, with supplying of uh, everything what we need and what Europe need to protect itself. Are you concerned about US aid package not forthcoming? Last week, President of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, have had very good conversation with uh, Speaker Johnson, and we have uh, hope that uh, nearest time during this month, uh, U.S. Congress will took final decision about support of Ukraine. Uh, uh, there could be discussions uh, which of the packages they will vote, but uh, we believe that uh, we have support from Democrats, from Republicans, so we have bipartisan support. We have support of U.S. society, and I believe that we will have decision this month, and uh, they will continue their support, and especially military support, in which we are strongly interested. Now, today in Riga, you called for the creation of joint uh, military production companies with Latvia. Uh, for the production of things like, of course, drones, but also 155 millimeter ammunition, artillery shells, which are very important for Ukraine. Any concrete decisions on, on that end yet? I should begin uh, and express my highest uh, gratitude and appreciation to Latvian people, to Latvian government uh, for such a strong support of Ukraine, for support us in all spheres, in general, in humanitarian, in military sphere, in, uh, in creating of many coalitions. And this initiative to create drone coalition is absolutely brilliant because of now drones are uh, 
let us survive on the front line while we have this gap for this supplying of uh, artillery shells. Uh, we survive only uh, thanking to drones. So uh, creation of drone coalition is a perfect idea. We are so much grateful. And today we discussed all the and technical and financial and uh, legislative uh, specifics uh, of such a kind of cooperation. Uh, I believe that it will bring very good results during this year, but this is only the one aspect of our cooperation. We absolutely may uh, continue to develop our cooperation in all other uh, defense and military uh, spheres, especially in production of the 155 uh, round caliber and all other directions. So uh, I believe that our companies will find itself on different international events, on the Berlin uh, conference for Ukrainian recovery, on the uh, business to business uh, meetings. And we have very good perspectives and we understand that we are partners, we are friends, we are neighbors of our mutual enemy. And we should protect uh, ourselves uh, having this um, unity between ourselves, signing actually security agreements. I hope it will sign uh, nearest time by our presidents. Uh, we'll see and uh, I believe that it will be like a new chapter in our relations. Ukraine has signed several bilateral also security agreements with various uh, EU nations. Uh, Ukraine President uh, Zelensky also uh, a couple of months ago on a two-year anniversary of the full-scale invasion, he talked about the planning of Global Peace Summit, uh, that Ukraine is planning that to, to develop a plan to end the war uh, that would meet the Ukrainian interests and also to ramp up the global support uh, for Ukraine. And as a Prime Minister, you visit many countries across the globe, uh, starting, of course, from here, Europe to the United States, uh, to Japan, and uh, you know, traveling around the world, how do you assess the current global mood about Russia's war against Ukraine? Is it somehow shifting and how and was the situation there? I may tell you that the only uh, the person which wants this war is Putin. No one all around the world wouldn't like to have this war. So everyone is ready to stop this war, but again, the only person who can stop this war is Putin. Uh, so uh, the mood in general is absolutely on the Ukrainian side. Uh, now we have support from uh, all our partners, absolutely. And we have support, we are working to, uh, to we are negotiate, we communicate with uh, other partner countries, with uh, so-named Global South countries. And uh, I think that them all will be on board uh, during this first inauguration summit of uh, peace formula Volodymyr Zelensky, which will be uh, held in uh, Switzerland in June of this year. And I believe that we will have more than 100 countries on board during the, uh, on the level of the leaders. And uh, we will decide how to move uh, next steps. And uh, on the next such kind of forum, uh, uh, we believe that we may invite Russia to negotiate directly uh, on the around the table diplomatically with all the leaders all the world uh, the, this is the only way when we may bring putin under the light and don't let him manipulate lie to us uh, lie to us that let's uh, see let's make regime of ceasefire he will just repower his army and will go into ahead again and uh, not only Ukraine will be under uh, their uh, under their heat. So that's an option sort of uh, for Putin to to come to the negotiating table, but only after uh, the current uh, uh, peace plan is set uh, with a global consensus. We all should be very good coordinated. Don't let Putin any chances to manipulate. So because of this, we would like to discuss all the specifics, we have 10 points of peace formula of President of Ukraine. We uh, absolutely uh, clear that this is the only way, uh, step by step, to bring to the sustainable and long-term uh, peace on Ukrainian territory, on European continent. And we should be uh, very, very uh, open and very uh, transparent during these negotiations. Because if we will go uh, under the table, if we will uh, find some kind of mediators, so I'm sure it will lead us to manipulation and we lost. We all will lost and Ukraine will lost. So it, it's impossible for us. 
So today also NATO is marking its uh, 75th anniversary since the creation of the alliance. And today in Riga you also said that uh, Ukraine will try to reach progress for Ukraine in the upcoming uh, NATO summit in Washington DC this summer uh, regarding Ukraine's NATO aspirations. For Ukraine, what would be a good result in the Washington summit? Uh, first of all, let me congratulate your country. These days it was the uh, 20th anniversary of uh, your membership in NATO and in the European Union. Uh, it's a long period of history and actually we have agreed that uh, you will share with us your experience of negotiations uh, and, and uh, all the steps for, um, uh, for being a member of uh, EU. Uh, about NATO, we are waiting invitation and uh, this is absolutely uh, clear and strong position for NATO and this is strong message to Russian side that Ukraine will be invited into the NATO and uh, there is no other way. So uh, participation in NATO is in our constitution. Uh, uh, this is uh, will of uh, absolute, uh, absolutely majority of our society. Uh, about more than 80% of people in Ukraine uh, are wishing to be a member of NATO. So uh, politically we are waiting for invitation. Uh, but now the ball is on the side of uh, allies, so they should take this political decision. From our side, we do our best. We implement all the standards, all the uh, parameters of NATO. We use weaponry of NATO. We cooperate with NATO. Uh, our soldiers are trained on the NATO base uh, the camps and NATO according to the NATO standards. So. Uh, as for me, uh, this is only about political decision. So look forward to the summit. Uh, my understanding uh, today in Riga you also talked, uh, you've had concrete proposals about what more sanctions uh, should be imposed against Russia, what is still lacking. Uh, what are those things that you see uh, that are still lacking, those concrete proposals you made here in, in Riga with talks with our government? We are grateful to your country for implementation together with European Union 13 packages of sanctions. Uh, these packages are working, there is no doubt. Uh, we should implement secondary sanctions uh, that these first packages uh, will be more effective and Russia couldn't avoid this. Uh, we also ask for implementation and other steps in sanction policy. Uh, so. Uh, to go on the sanctions with their nuclear industry, uh, to sanctioning management of Rosatom, uh, to sanction uh, nuclear fuel. It could be by stages. Uh, we understand that some countries are dependable from Russian nuclear technologies and fuel, but we understand also that these countries should find how diversify their dependence from Russia, such like many European countries diversify their dependence from Russian oil and gas. So it's next steps and other raw materials, other critical uh, raw materials. We also ask European Union to make ban on export of Russian commodities and Russian grain and uh, other food products in European Union because uh, now we can see all around the Europe these farmers' protests. Uh, they are uh, protesting against uh, different things, but when we open statistics and demonstrate that during the two years of full-scale aggression, Russian import into EU of the grain is increasing from month to month, we all realize and understand that we should uh, implement a uh, ban or this protection uh, taxes or uh, some other measures. Uh, don't let Russia to come on European market to uh, manipulate on this market. Uh, so this is actually uh, this uh, steps which we propose to implement nearest time. It's a balancing of political will and uh, eco economic needs and interests. You might have heard that the uh, Latvian government has also had to deal with these issues recently, uh, that there are some exports still going from Latvia to Russia, recently, or recently about the uh, manganese ore being mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, in transit through Latvia to Russia, might be used in military uh, production there. Your comment about that situation? Uh, we ask uh, to stop any transit uh, and actually and uh, uh, land transit, uh, air transit, uh, any kind of transit through the European Union countries. 
we ask this as a, one of the options of the sanction policy of European Union. So we discussed this today with uh, your Prime Minister, with uh, your Cabinet of Ministers, and I believe that we uh, may implement this, we may find a proper way how uh, to, uh, to implement this kind of sanctions. Now, in our interview is coming to an end. Um, so more sanctions probably bring, could bring the war closer to the end and uh, well Ukraine fights on as a society uh, as a state militarily and economically and has won much praise across the world especially also here in Latvia uh, but there are still many challenges ahead uh, and many people ask when will this war end also here I answered this uh, question. This war will end uh, this second, not even minute, when Putin decided to stop this war. Because he is aggressor, Russia is aggressor. Ukraine is uh, actually victim in this situation, so victim can stop aggression. Because uh, it, it's a victim. Uh, but uh, we believe that peace formula, uh, peace forum, uh, sanction policy, uh, our uh, resilience, uh, our uh, bravery, uh, supplying of ammunition, increasing of production of uh, uh, military and, and defense equipment, all these factors will influence uh, to bring uh, our victory closer. Uh, we should implement also punishment. Uh, so all the Russians' politics, all the Russians' uh, war crimers should understand that they will be punished. So international tribunal, confiscation of frozen Russian assets, it's also uh, these steps which we all together should implement and bring to reality and Ru Russia should pay. Should pay for all losses, all damages. Uh, they should be punished and pay uh, criminal responsibility for all of these war crimes and in the end of the day for the uh, crime of aggression. So all of these steps uh, absolutely strongly supported by Latvian government by Latvia and we really appreciate this. We are really so much grateful for this to the Latvian people. Thank you so much. Thank you. Prime Minister of Ukraine, Denis Šmiha, thank you for meeting us today here in Riga. Thank you. Paldies arī jums, skatītāji. Paldies, ka šovakar bijāt ar mums. Jauku vakaru.